Welcome to Sustainable Sailing. This is a Nook Plus Plus video. <laughs> and this is quite a surprise to us because we never expected to make a Nook or a Nook video. No, we're too old for the Nook. That's what yes. we thought when we saw it. So um, the Nook, if you aren't aware, is something that Dan and Kika made in Uma. So you need to look at Sailing Uma. Um, to see their story and how they created this space in their boat. But, and we, we have been inspired by them a lot, haven't we? Yes. When we first started our, um, what would you call it? Not a renovation exactly. A, refit. a rebuild. Yes, a refit of our boat. We were inspired by their nice modern look and the fact that they didn't care what was in the boat before. They just ripped it all out and started again with um, whatever was convenient and some and useful. looked bright and light yes. and our tip woodwork was very water damaged and people would say oh you how beautiful you've got all this teak um on the bulkheads but it's veneer it's damaged mm -hmm. and we're changing the bulkheads so um we, so we followed their uh well been inspired by them in lots of the changes we've made to our fore cabin to our aft cabin to our galley that we're planning for our chart table but we didn't just feel be radical really yes. be a bit more radical yes yeah so <laughs> um what we've struggled with though throughout our refit is what to do with where we're sitting at the moment and we're going to show you some pictures of what it was like originally um and how it's evolved over time but realistically mm -hmm. over four years I would say for three and a half of that years of that time, it's just been a um, dumping ground and we have sat on our a storage space, a storage, space, a tool storage, space. tool storage, resin storage, <laughs> etc. And we've sat on our starboard um, sofa. Now, though, we're getting close to uh, doing this. So shall we look at the, the pictures? Yes, have we've we got... got copies here, but we'll put them up for you um so we've got what it was like originally which shows all the beautiful woodwork and it also helps you to see there was a very very small galley which basically had a sink and a cooker and nothing else and the in surveyor condemned all the gas mm. um the cooker had, um all the burners were falling apart um the, the pipe work was corroded and dangerous right the way back to the where the gas bottles were so the whole lot was condemned um and and we personally condemned the seat cushions the seat cushions they were needed very condemning. 19 well 70s it must have been yeah, that's when the boat was built. they were orange originally but they were kind of orange with a touch of mold when we inherited them Ye so yellowed and um really horrible cl clearly there's been a smoker who'd owned the boat at, at some oh, point yeah um we had a lot of leaks uh, from the, all the windows, so they were wet. Um, they stank, um, and so okay, that's we took them out. That. Yeah. We took them out. But it did have a big, a U. Well, not big because it's not much space because it was centre cockpit. But it was a U shape with, with a, fixed a table. table that lowered down to make a double. Well, it was bed. a table that, in theory, lowered down to make a double <laughs> bed, it but easy. it was on a, um, a pedestal that you would have had to pull out the way in order to lower uh, take out off and we couldn't quite see how it was going to fit and there weren't really cushions for it so um it's never really been used uh, i don't think as a bed and then on the other side there was there were two two berths so one and um, where we have a settee now and then there was um, a pilot berth that above pulled it up fact, it was the backrest mm. to the settee um, hinged up to horizontal and became a pilot berth. And it was incredibly heavy. I didn't think I would be able to yeah, hinge the, it up in any... All the cushions um, basically had thick plywood and the foam glued to it and then the cover over it. So um, when you get to a six foot long um, cushion with mm. half inch ply underneath it, um, it very becomes heavy. very heavy. And not exactly easy to get to any of the theoretical storage underneath either. So no. that was another reason why we thought we were yeah. not going to leave that as it was. So let's look at our next picture. The next picture, I think, is probably just this is what we've been sitting on. 
um, for the last sort of two, two and a half, three years. I've Something been, like that, yes. Um, which is opposite where we're sitting now. Over there, we ripped out uh, all the uh, cupboards yeah. that were underneath the side deck. Um, and that was really in order to be able to do the work on the chain plates. So in that process, we've created, it's really a sort of temporary backrest um, that has sort of planks that just lift out. We've got a picture of... Uh, with, the, with the seat. There, yeah, there's the a picture of, with, with the, the seat, seat uncovered. Plank. And the, the planks can be um, repurposed, removed to become like a lee board. So um, you get a really nice wide single berth. As in this other picture. I've as got. in that picture there. So you get a wide single berth um, and you can have lee boards. Um, and the backrest is a better angle. And the backrest, we, we followed, you know, did some research as to what angles and lengths of squab and angles of backrest is supposed to be most comfortable. And it is pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. It's a little... The bench is a little bit low. Um, I don't know quite why they built them at that height, but compared to any mm. normal chair you would sit in, your feet are a bit high. Um, so um, not perfect. Other than that, it's pretty good. But it would be nice when you're actually living on the boat um, and not just camping for the weekend to be able to put your feet up sometimes. That yes. was in our minds when we're thinking about redesigning this area here. Yeah, and we want, we are focused on 90% of the time it's going to be just the two of us. We want good sea berths um, and we want to be able to occasionally have um, extra people staying with us. So it'd be nice if this could also make a just about a double bed. Yeah if we needed it for guests. But what we found um, when yeah. we, Jane made all these nice new cushions, um, and there's, a, there's, a, there's picture. A, a picture of Jane lounging um, <laughs> on the new cushions, but what it's immediately highlighted is if we look at the picture without any backrest, is that in the U shape, it was re a really tight space to fit this in. Mm. 77, the boats are not that beamy, um because it's the center cockpit the saloon is squashed a bit yeah um and further forward than it would be on some of the other rivals plus they've fitted their heads in in forward a bit so yeah so it's so it's a <laughs> tight. bit tight. tight um and when it's in a u-shaped seating you the squabs are really short and the backrests are absolutely vertical so it's not a comfortable place to mm, land no it's not um uh well it's not very comfortable at all well, in, in fact it had a strange feature as well if you look on the one where we propped up some pillows to try and make it more comfortable uh, the, uh where the original cushions ended there was actually a little bit that stuck out as like well like a teak rail screen. going around it more uncomfortable. and especially as it's cut the corner it was <laughs> radius into the so corner that's where we kind of migrated to the other side of the saloon and this made lots of space for storing yeah. all our stuff and um, and then the the other really big change that has fundamentally meant that we've got to rethink this whole um, port side is that we've extended our galley so we've built this extra bulkhead to give us a u-shaped galley with a, a, a much bigger An extra actual workbook. workspace where there was never one before because yeah. it was all used with sinks and cooker yeah so the idea has been all along that your feet can go underneath that, but you can't. So we've lost a seat, but your feet can go underneath so it when you're So we've got a picture that lying. shows just the bulkhead and how it, the original bulkhead, which we painted white. Which we've cut and, down, it um, is cut the down. The new bulkhead it where it sticks out above the box box. It's not really boxed in yet, but where you put your feet yeah. if you're um, sleeping there. So, yeah, the so now we've got the galley nearly finished and we want to, make this space really useful we've thought about um just make moving it out from the side of the hull and having another um, straight, straight sofa yeah. well that's but, what we were planning to do until yes. we were inspired by uma's recent video about how they were going to yes. redo their nook now unlike uma we've got it's just out of shot let's just twist the camera what? What? Okay, we've got uh 
mass compression post, which um, also makes Just the space to add to all the yeah, like tricky things about make, the makes this space more difficult <laughs> as well. So we have come up with this idea. Of calling, I'm calling it Nook Plus Plus. Cheeky. Because <laughs> it's like C plus plus is better than C. Wow. So um, what we want to do is be able to essentially create a double bed as a nook. Occasionally. So, oh, yeah. so the whole area on this side um, going straight to the mast post and then slightly tapering to underneath the galley extension that this become, can become a completely flat nook with cushions on a uh, mattress on to be our guest double bed mm. and that's in a sense where the similarity to the nook is oh and that's also we always wanted to have that bed available so yeah that was always part of the plan but where we've moved from uma's uh idea from what uh Kika and dan are doing is that we're saying well we want to be able to unnookify the area um so that oh, we can sit because because we need we're old we're not flexible so we need to be able to sit with our feet down and, and we want to do this backrest we don't want it to be rigidly upright because it is we tried it and it's yeah. horribly uncomfortable <laughs> and now the big big breakthrough that we've decided is to not sit facing inboard um, mm. because behind me we're going to have to um, put our new um, knees in for the chain plates we're going to put new cupboards here but if we make it so that this can be a nice sloping backrest then the whole thing comes so far out towards the middle of the boat that you end up with just a very narrow corridor between two sofas that face each other so we've realized we can do something different and i'm going to get up and ask jane to do a bit of posing so what we're <laughs> going to do is make it so that like we can bed. have either a full double bed mm -hmm. filling all of that space or we can have a single bed so if you would like to demonstrate what a single bed would be like well, well there's no room for my feet right now but you know hey you're a den and get your feet up. So, I like that, but you can put your feet out when your feet there. go under there if we haven't got other stuff under there. And so, this becomes our um, primary port side sea berth with a lee cloth. But this area, if you're not needing it as a, a double bed, becomes a really nice seat there yes. with a very sloping backrest so the seat yeah. comes forward to about where the mast compression post is and you have a sloping backrest there so, so if you'd like to sit room for your feet even if you sit a little bit away like that and yeah. you've got somewhere to lean against so <laughs> when we're in a um, lounging mode basically the double bed becomes two seats with nice slopey backs and the choice of we can lift out a section here as a footwell there somewhere here yeah going mm. across there or you can have your feet up so it's either like a chalong, long isn't it i suppose yes. slopey back feet up going that way or it's a seat slopey seat with a footwell but in order to be able to do that without with because if you just take that middle bit out and you've got your nice slopey seat back here you've got nowhere to you, the squab has to come the long way this way <laughs> it doesn't work yeah. basically so what we're actually planning to do is kind of what we've seen on caravans and things is that um the seat squab and backrest will be what adjustable is the bit you sit on just in yeah. case you've been wondering the seat what he's talking about the seaty bit <laughs> the bum goes on so the bit your bum goes on and the backrest will be slidey and hinged so you can push them back that way and, and have like this. quite an upright seat which well, would not be that comfortable but you would only do it when you're using a table so or a table for work and squeeze people tea. around it for dinner so that can be two of us sitting side by side feet into the hole 
and there's just enough space then to have a small bench seat here so we can actually sit four people at a table with these two are the people we don't like so much because it's not so comfy <laughs> or us so that our guests could be more comfortable okay. if you're a guest and you sit there we don't like you if you're a guest and you sit there we like you is that how <laughs> it is? a special guest like next one so next weekend one <laughs> yeah so basically what we're doing is by making the the seat back and the, the seat itself slide to and fro the footwell moves depending on whether you're having an upright seat or a lounging seat but then well when you're lounging there isn't any footwell yeah it can be oh. if you want to if you want to be semi-lounged okay um then but what we've decided to do is to throughout this is to keep the halfway split and that means you can do the two halves separately so you could have this half the outer side made into a bed with a lee cloth and the inboard side be a seat um, or another single bed um, upright seat lounge seat or single bed so you can have two people with a lee cloth between them giving you two sea births or if there's just one of you see you've... this is where dave gets carried away or if there's just one the simple idea and then he just makes it more and more complicated i'll make it beautiful we'll see if this will work so when you're <laughs> uh coming off watch you can sit a little bit to the side of where inboard of where jane is at the moment to get dressed hop over the lee cloth and there's your your bunk um which we I unless think, you're on the other side unless you wish to sleep on this which, side <laughs> you can choose to do so if you yeah. want to be on the downside we're not racing you can definitely sleep comfortably on the downside um and what we thought was where we because we don't look, want to lose the beauty of storage space of the nook so we'll actually have some lightweight boxes that fill the footwell and if you want to have a footwell you lift those boxes and put them underneath the galley extension, emptying the footwell. So, and hopefully a absolutely enormous water tank. Yes, underneath. we uh, let's just turn this way. Under the grey bit of floor is where our battery bank is resting on the keel, and okay. under this central bit, just aft of the compression post. Um, right the full width here is going to be our main water tank and um, we're being quite creative or venturous or stupid um, we're using the hull as part of the water tank as the sides bottom of the water tank and the floor will be the lid of the water tank so there's no wasted space and in fact no bilge at that point the bilge will be around the edges so um that's yeah. still well, that's, quite yeah. a way off yeah but this is our plans for the nook well, we've got to do the chain plate knees chain really. plate knees First. because we've got um, the mast up. that's where the capture out comes to so this uh, old knee is a little bit in the way and we've had to cut it out of it so we're going to take that one out fully and put two knees parallel to each other about uh, 15 centimeters apart um, and we're going to do the same on that side um, that's comes before we put the main mast up and then we're still planning what we might do for storage around this area yes let us know what you think about keeping your things in your storage in a boat because yes. do you use elasticy things that hold it in do you use sliding open, open doors? shells we're boxes, thinking about the cupboards. possibility of net with zips a bit like i think do you... Me or mesh uh yeah. yes sort of. um we've seen a couple of more racy orientated yeah. uh 59 degrees north their yeah. boats had uh like a fabric from so let us zip. know in the comments if you've got good or really bad experiences with any of those because it will be interesting to know yeah meanwhile this is all tidied up for special guests to come next weekend <laughs> we've not seen this much space but we have uh today 
got the galley reassembled, the cooker, a microwave and hobber properly in, gimbling nicely. The cupboard behind is done, just needs the doors fitting. Cupboard to well, build it's there. it's only primed. It needs more paint. Needs more paint. Um, and we're going to cover these worktops with um, a food safe epoxy. When we finally got Eventually. to do it. Yeah, and it, that needs a lot of courage. <laughs> So um, it's been a long time in the, <laughs> the anticipation. The... Anyway, that, right, that's, that's it. Dave yep. and Jane saying we love Kika and Dan and we love their <laughs> excitement, but we are not beautiful. We are not flexible. No, we don't do enough yoga. And we're not yoga. we're not young. No. So therefore, Nook Plus Plus <laughs> is building a couch on your boat that can adapt and be used in lots of different ways. OK. I think we better Don't finish buy it, there. build it. <laughs> yes. That's the end of this episode. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Yeah, and we would love your comments uh, <laughs> on what we're doing. Thanks very much. Bye. Bye.